And now, the Blue Please intro, if it were done by Weeble and Bob. And how it began. wasn't a good reason for that at all not a single one for some inexplicable reason i felt like it had to be i'm channeling more less of that i think welcome to blue please everybody my name is total biscuit it is eight o'clock in my country, in your country, it may be another time, but I don't care. Because I'm kind of in the middle of the world, according to the map. We're right here, on this little island, we cannot be assailed by no man. Hmm. Welcome to Blue, please. What have we got coming for you in the show today, here on WoW Radio? That is a great question, and one that I can answer. I am capable of doing this. What are we talking today about... What are $15 a month, or in our case, $8.99 a month, really pays for? What are the reasonable expectations to be had? Also, pimp my mount. Why teasing us with this kind of customization is actually a little bit cruel. Also, arenas as an eSport. Also known as the tutorial of how to hamstring your own venture before you even start it. Blizzard style. As well as discussion regarding battlegrounds versus arenas as viable choices for PvP. Can they coexist? Should they coexist? We'll be talking about that a little bit later in the show. And of course, the Elite of Choice! <laughs> yes, is your opportunity to email the topic for the last 15 or so minutes of the show. You can do so by emailing the Murloc at gmail.com. That is the Murloc at gmail.com. If you, for some inexplicable reason, forget my email address, you can find it on the front page. It's amazing! brand new system we have going here. Alternatively, if for some reason you do not have access to email or something like that, you can tweet me, which sounds way dirtier than it should. You can subscribe to my Twitter feed. Yes, indeed. Go to twitter.com slash totalbiscuit, and you can subscribe to the Twitter feed. And then you can tweet me by typing at totalbiscuit. That's the at sign, totalbiscuit. With 140 characters or less. So it can't really be that meaningful or particularly philosophical. You've got to better get right to the point. Anyway, less about that and straight on with the show. First things first. Ex- little announcement we've got. Next week on the show, I'm going to be having Ben, a.k.a. the guy who created Quest Helper, on the show to discuss the ins and outs of the new add-on policy, as well as how it's affected him, and a little bit about his mod as well. We'll be answering... Attempting to answer at least some of the controversy surrounding Quest Helper. And if you have any questions for Tim, you can email them to me at themurlocatumel.com. Tim, what the hell am I talking about? Ben! It's Ben, damn it! There are some who call him Tim. And most people call him Ben because they're not retarded. Yes, email themurlocatumel.com. And yes, you can ask whatever question you wish. It's absolutely fine by me. And I shall try and integrate them into the interview. So yes, by all means. Do so if you have any questions for 
Ben of Quest Helper fame. Righto. That's enough of that. So it's time for some of this. Uh, mail time. Mail time. Mail time. That mail sounds time. like oh, it's mail time. Here's the mail. Oh, it never fails. Oh, it makes me want to oh, wag my oh, tail. Oh, when it comes, I want to wail. Oh, yes. It is mail time where we read the mail. What an exciting feature that is. For some reason, that is just like the key point of a lot of podcasts and live shows, and I must say that it does work to some degree, but if you want to read about how it can work and how it's a really bad idea, you can read my new blog post. Yes, indeed. Blueplease.blogspot.com. Alternatively, the show blogs are now active on our show pages, so just go to our show page for Blue Please. You can see my blog. That's enough for that. Now, time for some content. Had an interesting... There's a very, very interesting little mail here from somebody who has, quite frankly, entirely disappeared. There we go. His name is Kevin Flynn, also known as Vengeance, a warlock from May Contain Funk, which is, as far as I'm concerned, I endorse them as the best-named guild ever, on Bronze Dragonflight EU. And it says this. Hey, TB, long-term listener here. Love the show. I just thought I'd point out this article on WoW Insider, which is the 25-man gear should not be better than 10-man gear article. According to this article, the author believes that not only are 10-man raids harder but should also reward better loot than 25 mans. And the example that he uses for this is 10 man saw 3 drakes being the hardest encounter at the moment. And he goes on. While the author clearly has no idea what they're talking about, and I can, like a lot of players, generally disregard what this individual has to say, the worrying matter is co- the comments. The sheer volume of 10-man raiders who side with them is astounding, and I would hate to think what would happen if such a large portion of the community ever went on a QQ spree to Blizzard. As a 25-man raid leader, I'd be disgusted if they put their loot in the same on the same level. Not only would you see a greatly reduced community of 25-man raiders, but also it would diminish current accomplishments. Gear counts as an achievement to some, Fury Warriors with Jewel Betrayers know exactly what I mean. Just wondering what your thoughts are on the matter. Stay funky. That's from Vengeance. Right, well, this is a multi-tiered kind of thing. First things first. I'm not going to say anything bad about WoW Insider because like WoW Insider, like a lot of places, ourselves included, basically regurgitate content. We repurpose it, we recycle it, we reuse it. Now... On my show, I do try to actually start debates as opposed to coming to them three weeks down the line with an opinion that's not particularly correct. But I'm not going to criticize WoW Insider or slag them off. The fact of the matter is that I'm done with that kind of thing. People can like them or not like them. It really is entirely up to them. My effort at this point is to concentrate on putting out quality content and starting debates, alternatively being the final word on particular topics by doing good stuff. And I think it will speak for itself, and I won't have to be so mouthy towards people. It'll save me a lot of time in future. So, there's just a little promise to you guys. We had a nice bit of constructive criticism, actually, on the forums that says, Hey, TB, you know, you're being unprofessional, slagging people off around the place. I'm like, well, you know what? You're probably right, to be honest, particularly on outside of WoW Radio. Slagging off other people, slagging off organizations in particular, it's not professional. And you know what? I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry to everyone that I've done that to. Despite the fact that I stand by my opinions, the fact of the matter is I should exercise more self-control when it comes to stuff outside of my own show. I can lose my self-control on this show as much as I damn well please. It's the ranty show. It's what you expect from a shock jock kind of presentation. But outside, no. No excuse for that. Entirely unprofessional. So I am very much sorry for that. And that goes out to everyone. So there you go. Anyway, in the meantime, let's constructively criticize this particular point of view. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they kind of jumped on the debate late, and the issue I have with Wire Insider is often that their columnists do not fully understand the bandwagon that they're jumping on. This debate really got fired up when I went on the air a few weeks ago and actually discussed the matter, and I put out a blog post supporting it as well. And I put this information on the forums to be read, and there was a huge discussion on the issue, which of course was punctuated by the show. Huh? Before that, there hadn't really been a massive amount of discussion on it, but the difference being I didn't want to come down on either side of the argument because there is a lot of validity to both points. The point is that I wanted the discussion to happen and I wanted Blizzard to call one side or the other what they were trying to do. Yeah, I wanted to know that because the, con- the content they had out at the moment and the content they currently have conflicts. It's like some of it is obviously meant to be harder, some of it isn't. And yes, the hardest encounter in the game being 10-man 
does say a lot, but it doesn't say what WoW Insiders seem to believe, or what a lot of other people seem to believe. Now, Ghostcrawler has already stated that Sarth 3 Drakes was a mistake on 10-man mode. They did not intend it to be that hard. Now, if you want proof of that philosophy now going forward, all you need to do is go to MMO Champion and have a look at the bosses in Old War. Now, compare the HP of a 25-man boss in Old War to a 10-man boss. I'm not talking double or anything like that. I'm not even talking in proportion. I'm talking four to five to six times as much. Yeah? And abilities that are way more dangerous. That's what they're doing. They are making it abundantly clear right now that the 25-man modes are supposed to be harder. With the exception, of course, of doing the 10-mans on hard modes. 10-mans on hard modes will probably be harder than 25-mans on normals. But then again, that's intended. The idea is that, yes, okay, it's easier on 10-man, but we're going to give you the hard modes to deal with that. And they're doing the same thing with 25-man. Now, I can understand that some people might argue that, oh, well, the 10-man should be just as hard because my play style indicates that I want to play as part of a 10-man guild. And that's fine. I understand that. The thing is, they have to call it on one side or the other. And one way or the other, they're going, they're on a losing kind of situation here. They are going to find a group of people who may be quite substantial in number that do not like it. Now, as far as I'm concerned, content for all, challenge for all is important. But I don't honestly believe, it's not my personal opinion at this point, that 10 man should be equally balanced with 25s. I don't believe that at the moment. Simply because Blizzard has made the call and they have stated it very unequivocally why. Yeah? And I'm fine with that. As long as the 10-man modes are still challenging, then I would think that people would be okay with it. Now, the comment particularly about saying that, oh, well, the sheer number of 10-man radius side by him is astounding. Well, if you're talking about the sheer number being less than 100, which is like, I think, I, I don't read Wild Insider, I must say, but hang on, let me find out how many comments are on this. Because this is one of their, like, big opinion puff pieces, and it's an op-ed, effectively. They had, like, 408 comments total. And they plugged this all over the place. 408. Now, let's have a look at this. If Old War were under that, blah, 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 right, we're not going to vote in that. But to be honest, even if every single one of those comments agreed, that's 408 people out of 12 million. That's not even a vocal minority. That's a handful. That is totally and utterly ineffectual as well, because these are not the kind of people that will take it to the forums and have the debate. Huh? They didn't have the debate. A lot of them didn't. The ones that just agreed with them just agreed with them flat out because it's like, you know, it's the same with like people like Rush Limbaugh and stuff like that. It's like ditto, Rush, ditto. You know, these people with ditto heads. They read an op-ed which is a reasonable length and reasonable content even though it is factually wrong in many, many places. And they get to this kind of stage of saying, well, okay, I just, you know, they, they wrote a lot of it so they must be right. Well, that's not really the case. I don't like the argument as well that 10-mans are inherently more challenging than 25-mans because losing one player in 10-man makes more difference to losing one in 25 because it works both ways. Not only are you logistically trying to con basically control 24 other people as opposed to 9 other people, and yes, in difficult encounters, the raid leader does have to do that, and people do have to work in tandem. You can't simply work independently. That's the whole point. It's all about teamwork, not about having lots of people there just to do exactly the same thing. While it takes, yes, it does take it more out of your raid to lose a 10-man player than it does to lose a 25, yes, there are less, there's less margin for error, but in 25-mans, there is more margin for people to make errors because there are more people in general. The law of averages states clearly that if you have more people, there is an inherently larger possibility that one of them is screw up. And particularly, say, if you look at counters like Archimonde in TBC, one player screwing up, regardless of whether it was 10 or 25 man, had a effect. And in larger scale encounters, particularly stuff like Gathun and stuff like that, having lots of players was a handicap. Doing it with less players was a good thing. Same with Anixia back in the day, when Anixia used to be hard. Doing it with less players actually made it easier. Because the deep breath, of course, didn't affect as many people. You didn't get so many people hit by fireballs, etc., etc. You didn't have so many issues with aggro control. You didn't have so many people to heal. It made it inherently easier. Gathun, same difference. If you have 40 people and you spread it out throughout that room, it is tricky. You've got to be careful. Because if you get 
chain eye beam, you're pretty much dead. And Archimonde, the same thing. You might argue that, oh, well, Archimonde 10 man, 25 man would be exactly the same difficulty. That's not true. Because you've got a bunch of fire on the floor, you've got all of these abilities going off, you've got more people to heal, there is more possibility that you will make a mistake. If fire spawns and there's 25 people versus 10, there is a higher probability that the 25 people will get hit by it than the 10 people will. More people will get hit by it. That means heavier duty on the healers, more stress on the healers. Controlling that is tricky. I don't think that you can necessarily argue, looking at precedent, you know, looking at the way that stuff has been designed in the past, that 10 mans are inherently harder than 25s. They're not. Yes, they have proven that they can make an encounter that is harder, but that was, by their own admission, a mistake. Obviously, that's not the way they want to go. Now, my concern is simply this. That 10 man content provides a challenge and the gear that it provides is good enough to do all of it. Yeah? This was the issue that I initially had and this is why the debate had to happen. Because I was saying you've got to call it one side or the other because you've got a situation right now where a exclusively 10 man guild with exclusively 10 man gear cannot kill the hardest 10 man encounter in the game. Yeah? And now they've put in an achievement. This is, this is the result of people getting behind this debate and actually having this discussion and Blizzard coming to a good compromise. Yeah? This is why Blizz uh, WoW Insider or whoever else writes about this now is beating a damn dead horse. Blizzard already made its call and then went out of its way to provide that. They have made sure that the last hardest boss in the game on hard mode for 10 man is beatable with 10 man gear because they have an achievement for it. They put in a, a realm first achievement specifically for that as well as other achievements for it. It is clearly going to be possible, otherwise that would never be there. That's it. That is the end of the discussion for the time being. You can't just keep on going and demanding and demanding and demanding and getting all mouthy about it when Blizzard has made a step forward. And I absolutely commend them for that. Yes, they do listen to the community, and as much as I bash on them, as much as I do disagree with stuff they say, they do take steps to rectify a lot of this stuff. And yes, the debate has to be had, but it's over. It's done. This was three weeks ago, and Blizzard made the changes. What more do you want? Writing an op-ed, writing a piece like that, and not having all your facts in order is just damn irresponsible. And it causes more noise, yeah? And it doesn't help matters. It doesn't encourage the debate, because the debate is done. Finito. Fin. End. This is a song from a game called Plants vs. Zombies. And I'm going to have it stuck in your head forever. Enjoy. 